Whoa, 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 wait, stop the clock. You don't need to shoot me. Just put the gun down. Let me go to widescreen. I'm only here to review this game. You don't need to do anything. Ah, uh, yeah, you can stay and watch. I mean, just sit right down there and don't touch anything. Hey guys, and you. I'm Bonefoot, and this is my first Halloween video. We don't really celebrate Halloween here in Finland, or at least where I live, but I thought it'd be fun to start a little tradition of making spooky videos this time of year. I am a pretty big fan of all things horror after all, I've always loved old horror movies, and in recent years I've been getting more into horror games as well. For this first time celebration I've decided to review one of the spookiest games I own, Ghoul Panic. <laughs> Just look at those frightening ghosts. Okay, fine, maybe it's not the spookiest game, but it fits the Halloween theme and I wanted to talk about it, so I'm talking about it. As you might have gathered from the intro, it's a light gun game. Now, the only light gun I owned back in the day was this NES Sapper, and I had a lot of fun with it for a little while, but my interest in it slowly faded away. I never knew anyone who owned the Super Scope for the SNES, so I went through that whole generation without seeing anything new come out in the light gun scene. It wasn't until the PS1 that I got to see the next piece of gun peripheral goodness, when one day, right after Christmas, my best friend called me over to his house to show me what he'd gotten from Santa. We went into his room and there he had all set up and ready to Go. This, the Namco Gun Khan, the second light gun released for the PlayStation after the Konami Justifier. By this point I had almost completely forgotten about light guns and this was an awesome return to that part of gaming for me. The Gun Khan looked so much more badass and realistic compared to the bright orange sapper. It doesn't have the same satisfying loud click when you pull the trigger. Like the sapper, you don't need to pull the trigger nearly as far and it's much lighter and just makes this small clicking sound. But that actually makes it so you can shoot much more rapidly and with less effort. They also put A and B buttons on it which do different things in different games. In Time Crisis, which was one of the two games my friend got with the gun, you used the A and B buttons to peek from cover. This was such an awesome game, it felt like a next gen Hogan Sally. The other game he got was Ghoul Panic. We had so much fun playing it. Unlike in Time Crisis, which is a pretty tactical game with reloading and using covers, in this one the only button you need is the trigger, and most of the time you can go crazy with the gun with unlimited ammo and no reloading, just blasting ghosts like a madman, which was very appealing to a kid. Let's delve a little deeper into the game. What I didn't know back then was that Ghoul Panic is actually a spin-off game of this light gun game series called Point Blank, which had three entries in the arcades, all of which were then ported to the PlayStation. I haven't had the time to play these much yet, but from what I've played and gathered from videos, they are wacky Japanese warrior-like games turned into light gun shooters, where dozens of short and unique minigames are thrown at the player in quick succession. I recommend you check out Happy Video Game Nerd's great review video of the whole trilogy if you want to find out more about them. Ghoul Panic also first came out in the arcades and then was released for the PS1 in 1999 between Point Blank 2 and 3. For some odd reason it was never released in the US, only Japan and Europe. Unlike what the back of the box says, it was not developed by Namco like the Point Blank games. They were just the publisher this time. The developer was a company called Aiding Slash Racing, who were known in the 1990s for making arcade games like Bloody Roar, 1944 The Loop Master and GoGo13. Let's jump into the game and see how many nightmares it'll give us. There are quite a few different modes to choose from and I'm going to showcase all of them in this video. Let's check out the arcade mode first and see what the fundamental gameplay is like. The story goes as follows. A crazy witch called Witsina, who lives in an old deserted house on a hill in an unnamed town, has allegedly started turning townsfolk into cats to add to her collection. Players 1 and 2 take control of the main characters Lisa and Kevin, both of whom have been turned into cats. They are marching to the witch's house guns blazing to save the townsfolk and lift the curse from themselves. To help them accomplish their mission you have to play through 17 minigame-like stages. Before each stage you are quickly briefed on what your objective on that stage is and how many bullets and seconds you have to finish that objective. Every stage is randomly picked from a selection of 70 minigames from 8 different categories. The categories include such things as having a single target that you have to shoot using only one bullet, having unlimited ammo to shoot an endless horde of targets, 
protecting kitties from getting attacked, and plain old target practice where you need to reach a certain score, etc. One category is just called everything else, in which the developers threw all the wackier minigames that didn't fit in any other category, like this one where you need to shoot all the fleas off the cat. Most stages, no matter the category, have you shooting ghosts of different shapes and sizes, but other spooky targets include spiders, icicles, skeletons, a turkey, and a few others. My favorite stages are the ones where a handful of ghosts appear on the screen at small intervals and you have to do some fast precision shooting because they remind me of western quick draws and I do best in those stages. The single target stages are pretty fun too but they're quite easy and always very short. In the unlimited ammo ones with tons of targets after the first few carefully aimed shots I just find myself pulling the trigger rapidly and half aim into the direction where most targets are huddled up. I feel like that's the only way to beat some of those stages and I don't enjoy that as much anymore as I did when I was a kid. And then I also end up shooting things I'm not supposed to shoot. You start off with 3 hearts and you lose one every time you either fail to pass the goal of the stage, shoot a forbidden target which are cats, bomb ghosts and other players colored ghosts if you're playing with a friend, or by failing to avoid a boss's attack. In the arcade version of Ghoul Panic, if you lost all three of your hearts, you would need to put more money in the machine to continue. But on the PS1, you can of course just keep putting in more and more fake coins, so there's much less incentive to avoid losing hearts. But in any case, you're mostly playing for the high score anyways. Your score in each stage is determined by the amount of hits you get on targets, your hit rate, your speed, how rapidly you fire, and your accuracy. The arcade mode starts with a random intro stage and after that you get to choose the order in which you want to do the next 4 stages. One of the 4 always has a gem attached to it. If you beat that particular stage you'll receive it and once you've played all 4 stages and move on to the first boss, the gem takes some health off of the boss before the fight begins to make it a little easier. After the first boss the cycle repeats 2 more times, play 4 stages and face a boss play 4 more stages and face another boss, and then at the end there's an additional final boss that takes damage from all the gems you've gathered until then. Kill her and you beat in the arcade mode and the main characters and all the townsfolk are turned back to their normal selves. The bosses are all the witch's family members, first there's her little brother Frankie who jumps on a pogo stick, then her father Vladdy the flying vampire, then the witch herself is the third boss, and the final boss is her monster's mother Mamma Mia. <laughs> That's uh, quite the family she's got there. Don't ask me how it's possible, but anyways, the bosses are fun to play and quite challenging. All of them take a lot of bullets to kill and usually have a couple of different ways of attacking you, all of which can be avoided with some fast and precise shooting. Your best strategy is to keep calm and calculated through the whole fight, concentrating on preventing all the bosses' attacks and getting hits in between the attacks. Or you can do it like me, uh, aka finger. panic and start desperately dumping Stop crazy amounts of bullets on them, hoping they die before you, and strain your fingers in the process. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ow. <laughs> My hand really didn't like that boss fight. You can still feel it. The arcade mode takes about 15 to 20 minutes to play through and it's decent. It's fun to see what the original arcade version was like, but I'm personally not big on trying to set high scores. And with no way of losing or no incentive to not just keep putting in fake coins every time you die, it becomes a bit boring for me. I prefer the other modes that are exclusive to the PS1 version that make Ghoul Panic feel more like a console game. The first one of these is the adventure mode in which you explore a mansion in first person perspective by shooting arrows on the screen to move. This is mostly used to find doors which activate a single stage, but there are also treasure chests and other hidden secrets to find as well. Your goal is to find the doors and beat the stages within them, which gets you helpful items like masks that act as extra hearts, and machine guns which you can use to rapid fire by just holding down the trigger. One of the stages will reward you with an item that'll help you reach the boss door, and beating the boss will earn you a key that grants you access to a lower floor of the mansion. What makes this mode more fun and challenging is that now you can actually fail. Losing all your hearts to a boss immediately ends the fight and throws you back to the mansion corridor, which means you have to beat the boss with just the one set of hearts you have when you enter the boss fight, instead of just putting in more fake coins to continue without any interruption like in the arcade mode. 
There's even an extra boss in this mode, with Sina's second little brother, Mami. He is now the first boss and is unfortunately extremely easy, so he doesn't bring much to the game. The mansion has a total of four floors. Once you've explored them and beaten all the bosses, you face the final boss and by killing her you beat the adventure mode. The story is otherwise exactly the same as in the arcade mode, but instead of a haunted house, it's a big mansion. It takes about an hour to beat the adventure mode and it's a lot of fun to play through once, but there's no real replay value. So after playing that, I spent most of my time playing my favorite mode in the game, which is survival. Before we go into that, I gotta mention that beating the adventure mode unlocks another mode called Remix, which is basically an extended arcade mode. They added four more stages and the extra boss mummy to it. Survival is a very simple mode. You pick a difficulty and then you play an endless stream of stages until you've lost all your three hearts, and then it's game over. The game tracks how many stages you beat and your cumulative points from all the stages. It's fun to challenge yourself to beat more and more stages with just three hearts. It might seem rather easy at first to someone who's familiar with most stages, but eventually you're bound to make some mistakes. Stop running! Ow! Ow! No! Ooh, that's brutal. Then there are of course those few feared stages that for some reason you can just never beat. For me one of them is definitely the one where you need to shoot the heads of the skeletons. Oh no, not this again. I just can't for the life of me hit the heads of those stupid dancing, football playing, crawling bastards. It's a goddamn nightmare anytime that stage comes up. <sighs> that is way too hard. The only thing survival mode lacks is the boss fights, but you can get your fill of those in the previous modes. Next up is the party mode which has multiple different multiplayer games. The arcade mode in itself already has the option of two players, but these are some extra multiplayer goodness. Free Battle is a one-on-one -on -one versus game where you choose how many stages you want to play, and whoever does better aka gets more points in most of those stages wins. You're definitely going to need two gun cans to make this at all fair, playing with a controller is just not good times. Race Battle is a 2-8 to eight player game where you take turns playing stages and your point score determines how far your ghostly car moves forward on the racetrack. You can choose how long you want the track to be and whoever reaches the goal line first wins. Panel Battle is another 2-8 to eight player game. In this one your goal is to turn the most amount of panels on the board to your color. Most panels have a stage in them that you need to beat to turn them to your color, but some have other good or bad surprises in them that can turn the tide of the game. All the party games are good in my opinion, I think they make Ghoul Panic a fun game to play even with bigger groups of people. The game is overall pretty easy to understand and always explains what you have to do every step of the way, so even new players shouldn't have much trouble just jumping in even if they haven't played the game before. Then lastly there's practice mode which is self-explanatory. You can practice playing any and all of the individual stages including boss fights that you've played in any of the other modes. That concludes our tour of Ghoul Panic, I really like the game, it's one of those light gun games like Duck Hunt that you can keep coming back to every 6 months to a year to enjoy for a few hours and even more often if you have friends to play with which I do not. The gameplay is well executed and the large variety of unique states is just ooze imagination and creativity. The great presentation with the cutesy Halloween-y visuals makes it stand out from all the other light gun games on the PS1. The music is a little less Halloween-y, but I think it makes sense to have more upbeat music for a fast-paced light gun game like this. There's still some Halloween flair there and it sounds great. However, my favorite piece of music in the game is the awesome victory theme that plays anytime you beat a state. It's so groovy, I love it. So if you have the means of playing it, I definitely recommend you check out Ghoul Panic, it's a great game. I really hope you enjoyed watching this, I'll see you next year with another spooky video, but in the meanwhile I'll be making some less spooky ones. So stay tuned for more videos and thanks for watching, happy Halloween!